Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here. Today's review is a much requested one, KDE Neon. Now, for those of you who have not heard of it, this brings together a Ubuntu 1604 LTS base with the latest KDE desktop and software. The idea here is to get the stability of that LTS core while at the same time still getting the latest KDE goodies. This review is going to be a little bit different from my usual reviews as I've been using Neon as my main system for over two weeks now. So because of that, you'll see that uh, the theming, panel layouts, so on, they've all been customized to my personal preferences. There will be a full write-up of this review on my blog at agrisaac.com. I'll leave a link below in the video description, so if you want to go and check that out, you can do that. All that being said, let's get started with the review. According to the KDE Neon FAQ page, Neon is not a distribution. Per their FAQ page, it is a package archive with the latest KDE software on top of a stable base. While we have installable images, unlike full Linux distributions, we're only interested in KDE software. Throughout this review, I'm going to refer to this as a distro, so hopefully nobody gets offended. Taking a look at the KDE Neon website download page, you'll see there are a few versions available. The user edition, which is what I downloaded for testing purposes, gives you the officially released KDE software. The user LTS edition gives you the Plasma LTS, which currently is version 5.8. Personally, I don't see any point in this as the whole reason to use KDE Neon is to run the latest KDE. Now there's also developer editions which can either use the get stable or unstable branches. This is for those who like to play with fire or are testing as the case may be. Anyway, moving on. Uh, installation, it went pretty quick and easy. It uses what appears to be the standard Ubuntu installer, so no surprises here. Went smooth, great, awesome. After installation, logged in and updated my system, and that took me to Linux kernel 4.8 and KDE 5.10.2. Now, we're on, while we're on the subject of updates, I did want to mention that the Neon users get KDE updates within days of their release. So you really do have a bleeding edge KDE desktop. Uh, something I really can't show in the video is how quick the startup was. It was fast, much better than I've seen in uh, other distributions running KDE. Now the default desktop is Bonestock KDE, which as you can see, I've changed that. Normally I don't do this on distros I'm reviewing, but since this is uh, at least was planned to be my main desktop. Uh, I really don't like the default KDE theming, so change was, on, was in order. Uh, now, I know that I'm going to get questions on theming and how I set that up, so I'll just run through it real quick. Let me open up system settings and I'll show you what I did. Um, I downloaded the Arc Dark look and feel theme as a starting point. For the desktop theme, I went with arc color and the cursor theme is pulse glass. The color theme is arc as well. I changed my fonts to the Ubuntu fonts which I feel are some of the most readable out there. Anti-aliasing is enabled and configured for slight hinting with RGB subpixel rendering. Uh, I've always found that that helps with font rendering on GTK apps. Uh, the icons those are the papyrus icons, or papyrus, I'm not exactly sure how the, the correct way to pronounce that is. Uh, under application style, uh, the widget style is the breeze theme. Personally, I prefer Qt Curve, but unfortunately, Qt Curve currently does not work with Plasma 5.10, or at the very least, the version in the repos doesn't, and I wasn't about to take the time to compile Qt Curve from uh, source. Uh, window decorations are Windows K10 in the GTK styling. Uh, I stuck with the breeze for the GTK 2 and 3 themes, 
and duplicated the pulse glass and the papyrus for the cursor and icon themes. Out of the box, Neon is very light on software. The basic KDU, KDE utilities uh, such as Dolphin File Manager, KDE Discovery are installed, uh, Firefox for web browsing, VLC for media player, and that's about it. Now for the intermediate to advanced user, this is pretty awesome. Uh, you install what you want, only what you want, and, and you know, I wish more distributions would do this or at least offer a minimal setup ISO. Uh, now, having said that, I think new users should stay away from Neon for the same reason. Not that the Software Center doesn't make it easy to install software, because it does, but because a new user isn't necessarily going to know all the packages, all the steps that they need to get that well-functioning system. You know, for example, to make full use of LibreOffice, you know, you're going to need to make sure that you've installed Hunspell. Uh, if you don't want it to look like an app out of the 90s, you're going to need to install the KDE integration package. You're going to want to tweak the font settings as I did, uh, you know, I pointed out earlier so that you get good uh, uh, font rendering in, in LibreOffice. You know, and, and it's not that a new user can't figure these things out. You know, there's Google, there's plenty of resources out there to, you know, find the answers. But for a new user, you know, let's not try and overwhelm them all at once. They've already got a lot on their plate to learn about. Anyway, moving on. Uh, since many KDE distros use a distro-specific package manager, let's take a look at Discovery, the KDE Software Center. This tool is really one-stop shopping for your software needs. From the home screen, you have a search bar so you can search for a specific app or you can browse through the, through the categories. Um, now, there's pretty good descriptions of the applications and there's also user reviews so you can check those out and see what other people thought of software, that sort of thing. Um, Discovery also allows you to update existing software and from the settings menu, you can manage your software sources. Now, unfortunately, I found Discovery to be somewhat buggy. Uh, oftentimes, the search would bog down, and when trying to do updates through Discovery, they seem to take forever. On my system, I had a uh, Synaptic Package Manager for browsing and searching packages, and typically, I update my software through the terminal. Um, and, you know, personally, I, I usually add software that way as well. Um, but, you know, hey, hey, I've been doing this Linux thing for a while. Um, <laughs> it's uh, for, for, for a lot of newer or, you know, even intermediate users, they may want to stick with uh, some sort of package manager, the software center, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, because of the Ubuntu LTS base, non-KDE software is often older versions. As an example, the OpenShot video editor is at version 1.4.3. At the time of this video, the current version is 2.3.4. Granted, having an older version of an application doesn't necessarily mean less stability or, or fewer feature, features. Um, but if you're someone who wants all of the software to be cutting edge, you are going to need to add some PPAs or you're going to need to stick strictly with the KDE apps. As far as stability goes, KDE Neon is pretty impressive. Besides Discovery, the only app I had issues with was KDE Connect. Sometimes it would connect to my Android phone, sometimes it wouldn't. Now, this may be due to uh, just uh, uh, poor signal in my area, not exactly sure, um, but I did think I'd, I should throw that out there. Um, now, everything else worked in my areas just as it should. Uh, there were no crashes of apps, Plasma desktop, no problems. And, and that is a very big deal because I had tried Neon a couple of times in the past and walked away almost instantly because of the crashing of the Plasma desktop. So are there any downsides to Neon? 
Well, that depends on your perspective. The Ubuntu LTS core provides a nice stable base. On the flip side, it's not always the most up-to-date. We already talked about uh, the non-KDE applications. Another example, um, you know, the NASA drivers for, uh, for video, they're at version 12. Current version is 17. So if you're going to want to use this distro and you've got, you know, a, a very recent graphics card, you may run into some issues. Uh, so that LTS base, yeah, it's kind of a double-edged sword depending on your hardware and software needs. So, you know, maybe, maybe not, it works out for you. Of course, there's always the option of adding PPAs to get newer software, uh, but I've experienced stability issues when you add too many PPAs, so you got to be kind of cautious of that. There are disadvantages to having the latest KDE as well. I already mentioned the QT curve issue. Depending on your software needs, you may run into other instances of having too new of a KDE version to function with some pieces of software or certain software add-ons. Another minor annoyance I ran into has to do with Dolphin in KDE 5.10. Now, I've always liked Dolphin, and back in KDE version 4, you could add root function to Dolphin by going to uh, Control, Configure Dolphin, and then to Services, and then do a little search for, uh, for adding root, and you could find this option where you could go and download a script that would add a Open as Root option to the right-click menu. Now, in KDE 5... This, uh, this script no longer worked, but there was a workaround that allowed you to set this up manually using KDE sudo. And actually, uh, Big Daddy did a video of this on his YouTube channel. I'll leave a link down below to that video so you can check out how to do that. Um, now, unfortunately, as of KDE 5.10, this no longer works. And after doing some reading online, I found out this was intentional by the KDE development team and that in a future release, there will be a way to run Dolphin as root without using KDE sudo. However, in the meantime, this function is missing from Dolphin. Now, I know the conventional wisdom says never use a graphical program as root. And personally, I can work around this uh, through the terminal. Uh, you know, I use the terminal well enough that this isn't an issue for me, but I do realize that for some people this may be an issue. So hopefully returning the root privileges to Dolphin will come sooner than later, as I could see this as something that may cause a significant uproar in the user base. Now, having said all these things... Um, for the experienced Linux user wanting a great KDE experience, Neon is tough to beat. Stability is awesome, uh, and and you know having the latest KDE everything uh, that you know that's just kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, so the question probably a lot of you are asking, hey, you know, since since I kind of brought it up earlier in in the video. Uh, Am I going to stick with Neon as my main desktop? Well, short answer, no. Um, but this is not because of some deficiency on KDE Neon's part. Uh, really, it's more about me and KDE General. We've had a love-hate relationship all the way back to when I first got started uh, playing around with Linux. Um, and... and, and you know, over the years, I've tried a variety of KDE distros, and the same thing always happens. Within a month or two, I get aggravated with something on KDE and replace it with something else, which for the past few years is generally something running the GNOME desktop, although I, I am a big fan of Budgie these days as well. Um, now, and here's the thing. Um, I love how you can tweak every little detail in KDE, how the desktop looks, how the windows behave, KDE activities, and so forth. 
And because I am so OCD about my computer, I will obsess about every little detail that I could possibly tweak trying to create that ultimate desktop experience. Never, you're never going to achieve that. Uh, and But I'm always making minor changes here and there. Now, this you know, absolutely causes my productivity to take a major nosedive, uh, leading me to get frustrated and pissed off, and eventually forcing me to scrap the whole KDE distro thing for something else. So really, the choice is more about my personality than how good or bad KDE Neon is. And it is a good distro, um, even if the developers don't want to call it a distro. You know, you've got cutting edge KDE packages, solid Ubuntu LTS core base, you know, simple awesomeness. Uh, and, and, you know, with minimal default packages, this distro is the tweaker's dream. Uh, but for me, it doesn't work just because I can't get anything done. Well, I believe that pretty much finishes this video up. As always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below, and I will try to get to it as soon as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and share this video with uh, all your friends and anybody who loves anything uh, Linux so that we can try and grow this channel, get more people to watch, and, and all that kind of good stuff. And as always, I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks again.